Hello and welcome to Healthy Living. I'm Dr. Donald Pelto and today I have Mr. Paul Sear here. He's the owner of CrossFit Worcester and also a nutritional therapy consultant. Uh, Paul is helping a lot of different people with type 1 and type 2 diabetes, people with uh, different issues with gut health and uh, gut issues and health issues. He is on the lecture circuit talking about health issues and he is also a police officer here in Worcester. So Paul, thank you for joining the show. Thanks for having me, Don. You're welcome. So we're going to start a little bit talking about how you got interested in, in health and different types of health issues. Was there a problem with your health? And so tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, initially it started about 10 years ago, and I had been diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And I just, your standard hypothyroidism. Mm -hmm. At the time, I didn't know it was Hashimoto's. But I was undiagnosed for several years, so I had gained some weight. And uh, a friend, it just happened to be in a bar room, said, hey, we're starting this new CrossFit thing. Do you want to try it? And my first question, of course, was, what's CrossFit? And this was back in 2009. Okay. So we're going way back. So I decided to give it a try. Of course, I had been diagnosed, so they were able to get me on levothyroxine, proper medication, and, and I lost weight. And I actually, and I think that was sort of catapulted mm -hmm. because I had lost so much weight initially. And maybe it was because of the, the Synthroid, but I had already been doing these, these workouts that I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. And part of it is because I don't like to run. You know, uh, so when I started CrossFit, I was like, this is something where I can really, really push myself, and I enjoy it. And I ended up losing a ton of weight to the point, and gaining a lot of muscle. Okay. You know, I think I went down to 5.5% body fat at one point. Wow. It was probably too lean. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think my performance was as well back then. But sort of, it just kept me going. It kept me coming back. It was one of the first gyms. You know, usually it's Groundhog Day when we go to the gym. Mm -hmm. You know, back and buys, chest and tries shoulders and legs. You just sort of get bored with that yep. same old routine. Yep. CrossFit isn't about that. So CrossFit just kept, com it kept me coming back and kept me loving it. You know? yeah. And I think I started in April 2009. By December, I loved it so much, I went and got my trainer certificate. Okay, so then, then you could teach the classes, basically? Right, right. Okay. I, I, started, I started teaching the classes, mm -hmm. and I really, really loved teaching. Neat. Now, where the nutrition came in, you know, they were all talking. I think at the time, it was basically paleo nutrition. Okay. You know, basically eat like our ancestors. In a sense, it's, it all comes down to, you know, a science-based diet, eating real food. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't really be that complicated. You're just eating real food, foods that were genetically adapted and wired to eat over hundreds of thousands of years. Okay. So I started eating that way, and I, I just literally felt great. You know, I leaned out, cognitive function improved. Uh, I just had more energy throughout the day. Steady and consistent energy instead of these highs and lows. I think we're all we all sort of become accustomed to. Mm -hmm. And I sort of just pushed it from there. And then in, in 2012, I uh, got together with a couple of uh, co-owners, you know, a couple of my good friends, and we decided to open CrossFit Worcester. And that ah, was about seven So there wasn't ago. one there until... Right, right. There was only one in the city, and then we opened CrossFit, uh, CrossFit Worcester. And we're humble enough to have won Best in Worcester three years in a row. Wow. And they've only had the award for three years, so we're really mm. excited about that. And that's, that's a true testament to our membership. Yeah. So l let's talk a little bit about CrossFit. For those that are watching, uh, how many members are part of the gym? What, how long are the workouts? How, what do the workouts consist of? For those that never been in, but they've always been curious. Sure, sure. Uh, we're well over 200 members at this point. And uh, basically... We'll start off with a warm-up, okay? Mm -hmm. All the class will warm up. And every class hour that we have is exactly the same throughout the day. So they're the one hour long. They're one mm -hmm. hour long. Start with about a 10-minute minute, trainer-led warm-up. From there, we'll push into a strength. And I think we have one of the best strength programs around. We hmm. really do. Uh, Scott Boulay is the programmer, and he does a phenomenal job with the strength. I literally put it up against any, anyone in the country. Hmm. It's just unbelievable. Uh, that's about 20 minutes long, okay. and we know how important resistance training can be. Mm -hmm. And then we sort of, that leaves us about a half hour to set up and do the CrossFit workout, and then a little bit cool down and be able to put everything away at the end. But our, our typical workout is, uh, I think we average, we're averaging about 12 and a half minutes. Some of our longer workouts will be upwards of 20 minutes. What do you mean the workout? Uh... The, the actual CrossFit workout itself. Oh, so only 20 minutes or 12 oh, to 20 minutes. 12 and a half is probably the average. So it's really, really quick. Hmm. And we know, we've seen the science on the benefits of short, higher intense workouts. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of what we jump into and what we focus on when we look at CrossFit workouts. And sometimes they're team workouts, so there's a little bit of rest built in, uh -huh. but you're both hurt, working hard. And yeah, yeah people, people really seem to enjoy it. They really love it. And, and so who, who are the best type of people for the CrossFit workout? Is it young people? Is it old people? Is it, you know, who, who is it? Is everyone a good candidate? Yes. Okay. The answer is, the answer is yes. 
uh, we can pretty much accommodate anyone because it's infinitely scalable. Okay. So someone who, who has problems with, say, uh, plyometrics jump. You know, maybe they've been sedentary for a little bit longer than they wanted to and they've gained a little weight and maybe their knees are bad. Instead of plyometric jumps on a 20-inch box, well, let's just do step-ups on a 4-inch plate. Okay. So, so you'll modify. Literally, it's infinitely scalable. Mm -hmm. We can modify to pretty much, I mean, going back to George Sierra, he's a, a, a paraplegic. Who's, I'm sorry, who, George, George Sierra? George Sierra, good, he's, he's actually one of the motivational uh, speakers okay. around Worcester area and, uh -huh. and beyond. But he's a previous gang member who was shot in the back six down, so he's, he's uh, lost 90% of a func his function in his legs. And I remember specifically, we were able to get him to do a box jump. You know, we had bands supported by a rig wow. overhead. We got, and uh, I remember the look in his face when he did his first box jump. It was a 10-inch box jump, which was phenomenal. You know, wow. but when you take people from, from literally nothing, mm -hmm. and you're able to just give them a little bit more, and that's, that's really awesome. what life's about, and that's what CrossFit about. You know, CrossFit oftentimes gets a bad reputation because, you know, people think it's just rough and tough guys, and, and really, that's not what we're about. Mm -hmm. We really pride ourselves in being a CrossFit gym for the average person. You know, for regular people. So we can, we can take anybody, they come in, and I, we can almost guarantee they'll have a good time, especially when they get exposed and understand our community. Yeah. Because the, the community is so a big helpful. portion in terms of health, right? Oh, it talk, really is. Talk about community and... Well, I mean, well, I don't want to get too much into the studies, but socialization is one of the best aspects. When you look at longevity, health, and living a long, healthy life, socialization is a big part of that. Mm -hmm. So CrossFit can actually bring that component, too. Yeah. So we have the short, high-intensity workouts. We have the strength component, that resistance component that's so important to our health. Mm -hmm. We have the community aspect, which is incredible, and we can include nutrition in that too. And that's awesome. sort of when you put that package together, I think you can almost guarantee a longer life. Yeah. You know, yeah. barring crossing the street and something bad happening to you. Yeah. So let's segue. Well, before we finish CrossFit, if someone wants to try it out, how does that work? And they just, is there like a drop in class that people can try? How does that yeah, work? Yeah, absolutely. We offer a free class to anybody who wants to come in and give CrossFit a try. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah, they just, they just stop in, they'll, they'll sign a quick waiver, and we always have trainers on hand that can sort of just handhold them and bring them through the process, because it can be a little, little bit intimidating, a little yeah. bit nerve-wracking at first, but uh, once they walk in that door, which is oftentimes the hardest part, you know, mm -hmm. we hold them by the hand and we show them everything they have to be shown, and, they, and if they love it, they're more than welcome to shine, sign up. There's absolutely no obligation for that first class, and, if, and like I said, it's free. That's right. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. So let's, let's transition on a little bit to talk about the nutritional component. You, t you said that you are part of the Nutritional Therapy Association. Yes. And so is this something specific to CrossFit, or is this specific to Paul, or, no, or both? Not at all. Or tell me when about I started this. learning to love nutrition, I started seeking uh, you know, sort of nutritional programs. Mm -hmm. And I talked to a lot of friends, and they said one of the best programs for sort of real food nutrition was the Nutritional Therapy Association. Okay. So it was about a one-year course. And, you know, we had to go to Long Island. A lot of the study is, you know, online, online study, and I found it pretty intensive. Uh, and, you know, after that, I was able to get my, my nutritional therapy consultant certificate, and I'm able to work with people and take clients. So kind of like a coach. You're a coach or sure. consultant. Sure, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and so what I, what I find very interesting with you is you have CrossFit, you have this consulting or coaching business, and then you're also in the SWAT team and a police officer, right? Correct. How do you balance it all? Oh, I don't know. I don't know how I do it. Okay. Oh, my calendar. I think, it, I think the calendar on my smartphone is really how I do it. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's talk about when you're not being a police officer, how do you coach people? Do you do it in groups? Do you do it individually? Do you doing talks? Uh, what area for do you like? For the nutritional side yeah, or for the CrossFit side? Nutrition. Now we talked about okay. CrossFit. Let's talk about nutrition. Uh, I, a little bit of both. So I have taken clients one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. although I find that to be a little bit difficult with my schedule. Taking clients. You don't but have time. Certain clients I love to take on. I, I, I actually don't like to deal with weight loss. I think that comes naturally when you're doing the right things. And I find hmm. weight loss, if someone wants to come in just for weight loss, I kind of find that boring. Okay. So if you don't like to, or don't find weight loss enjoyable, what do you find enjoyable? If, if someone comes to me and they're, they're sick, they have one of the diseases of modern society, specifically like diabetes. Type 2 diabetes, right. meta metabolic syndrome, and, things and like us, that. Usually I think when, once they, they come to me, they, they, they found themselves frustrated with mm -hmm. the system. Okay. Okay. They've been to various doctors and nothing seems to work. And unfortunately, you know, the average doctor has about 24.6 hours of nutrition under their belt and eight none. years of medical school. None. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and, and I know also doctors are, and it's not, has nothing to do with doctors, right? They're, they're great people and you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're one of them. Yeah. Uh, but the education, I think, is for, specifically with MDs is, is lacking in that yeah. area. 
So when they find themselves frustrated and they end up finding someone like me, I think they're a little bit more compliant. And we've talked about this in the past where compliance is the real issue. And if we have compliance, I think we can make true change in the world, but people have to want to change themselves. Yeah, yeah. So you work with people individually, but mostly like in, in groups? Or, or do they just join the gym and then they get you automatically? Or how does that work? No. Actually, I, I do a lot of group lectures. I'm sort of on the, okay. on the a, a lecture circuit. I do a lot of the police academies throughout okay. Massachusetts. I've worked a little bit with the state police, Worcester EMS, uh, the military. I've mm-hmm. done you know, the Air Force and the, the Army, and I have another appointment to go out and, and see the Army National Guard. Uh, I've Perfect. done Boston, worked with Boston Special Operations, okay. you know, and they're SWAT guys. And, uh, yeah, pretty much anyone, anyone who will listen to me. And I've, I've, I've actually had my own private seminars, too, where I, okay. I'd put them on in different locations, sometimes at my gym. And, you know, they pay a little bit of money, and they come listen to me talk for four hours. Wow. And I feel like I should be paying them for yeah. them to come listen to me yeah. for four hours. Who yeah. would want to listen to me for four hours? <laughs> well, we have, we have about 20 minutes left. So sure. let's talk about kind of one of maybe the top three uh, tips you can give uh, people that are better here in Worcester because this is going out to people in Worcester. What are some sure. tips? So when I, when I walk in to give my four-hour presentation, I tell them, I could sum this up in three words. Eat real food. And if people understood what real food was, I think their entire life would change. But unfortunately, nobody knows what real food. We're all eating this refined excess carbohydrates, and our body isn't well adapted to deal with some of these things, you know, uh, grains. Sometimes legumes, sometimes they're intolerant to dairy, but they're insistent on having it, and they should probably just avoid it. Uh, but when they start eating real food, and I'm just saying, just keep it simple, meat and vegetables. Okay. You know, uh, lean meats and vegetables, nuts and seeds, little starch, some fruit, no sugar. And just do that. Yeah, if, I think if, if they just sort of stuck to that, you know. But, you know, in a lot of these things, they're very addicting, a lot of these foods. That's why we can say we can have all the, in, the best intention in the world to start eating a better diet. But unfortunately, it doesn't always work because we fall off the wagon. So let's, that's a really big question. So if you talk to people about eating real food, they know they want to eat real food, but they're addicted. What's the next step? How do, they, how do people make life changes that you've seen? What are the successful ones doing that the non, uh, unsuccessful ones aren't? They're making wholesale change. They're not viewing it as a diet. Okay. They're viewing it as a change in lifestyle. So they're not just taking this one aspect of their life, diet, nutrition, they're taking all aspects of their life and they're making wholesale change. And the people that are successful really, really commit to it. They don't say, and diet really has negative connotation to it. You know, diet is as short as... It's for a short period of time. It's the short, frenzied outburst of emotion. What we're looking for is a steady, tranquil dedication of a lifetime. And I think if people can dedicate themselves, you know, I'm going to make this change and I'm going to stick with it amazing things will happen, but they have to be ready for something like that. That's a big change. Yeah, those are big changes. And is this something that, do people have to be under the guidance of their doctor? Like these type 1 or type 2 diabetics, these people that have a lot of weight to lose, uh, can they just do it? Do they have to have help? Should, you know? I think it depends on the person. Okay. You know, some people can read a book. Uh, I was just talking to an uncle of mine the other day, and he, had, he was actually an in, uh, insulin-dependent type 2 diabetic. Okay. Right? And so I guess he had good enough pancreatic function because he went on the, uh, this keto diet thing that's out there now. And, you know, it, I think within two months he was off his insulin and mm. he's clinically remiss. That's great. But it's amazing. So he, he was able to do it without any nutritional guidance or coaching. And I think his son probably helped him out a little bit. Um, but when you have, you know, someone sort of hand-holding you along the way, it can be, it can be a little easy. You know, at my gym we do nutritional uh, challenges and things like okay. that. Sometimes 30 days, sometimes 21, sometimes 60 days. For, like eating better for a period of time and eating measuring better for a period of time. and things like that. Right. Sometimes we'll measure weight. You know, I wasn't big on measuring weight. Okay. And then it's funny, one of the challenges, they wanted me to make a very, very simple concept of eating real food and they wanted me to make it comp- more complicated. Mm-hmm. So we did the macro thing. But what I found out when people did the macro thing. So let's they, talk about people that are listening. They've never heard of a macro. What's a macro? Oh, macronutrients. So your fats, your carbohydrates, and your proteins. Okay. It's basically your three macronutrients. And they, you know, oftentimes we'll say eat more protein, eat more fat. Doesn't cause heart disease, by the way, as long as it's the right fat and yep. healthy fat. Correct. Uh, and, you know, go a little bit lighter on, on the carbohydrates, depending on where you are. Mm-hmm. We mentioned this. Hard-charging athletes probably could handle a, a lot more carbohydrates and diabetics probably want to keep that on the lower side to develop mm-hmm. some insulin sensitivity so that insulin start, starts working again. Um, 
so once they started tracking their macros, they realized that, you know, wow, I was, they were so deficient in protein or they were eating far more carbohydrates than they actually thought they were. And how do they track this? Are there some apps that you oh, recommend sure. or Oh, sure. My paper? Fitness Pal. My Fitness Pal. Yeah, you can okay. get a free version or a paid version, but I think that's one of the, I think they have a, like 100 trillion foods out there, and I say that in jest, but literally almost every food out there, even food you find at a grocery store, you scan the barcode with your phone and it brings up all the macronutrients and, involved. And, and in don't you agree, maybe just by tracking, it might help you to eat a little bit better. I do. I've actually, I've actually come around to agree with that. Okay. Right. So initially I didn't. I was like, eat real food and you'll be fine. But I've come, I've come around that if you do track macronutrients, it can really help you. Mm -hmm. Now it's different than in sort of this macro diet people to talk about. Um, I just want to make sure there's a, I, I differentiate that. One of the reasons, because when you're tracking just macros, if a Twinkie fits into your macros, you can have a Twinkie. This is where I wholeheartedly disagree. Right, so I think it's important to track macros to get a better understanding of where your food is coming. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk uh, for those that are listening. Difference between exercise and in eating. Uh, what's the percentage? How important are they? Both important? Is one more important than the other? Can you do the one age, without the other? The the age old question. I, I I'm going to go with the ninety ten. I think nutrition is ninety percent. Really. Of it. Oh, okay. absolutely. Perfect. So absolutely. Come I, to your gym once a, once a week and then eat, I know. eat, eat and I, better and I seven should, days I a week. I actually shouldn't be saying that, right? Yep. Because I do own a gym and that's, you know. Uh, but I, I really do but, think nutrition is 90% of it. Now, when you put the 10% on there, it becomes synergistic. Mm -hmm. Because I've seen people who go to the gym five days a week, even six days a week, but they don't change their dietary habits. And you, you, they don't have body transformations. Very few body transformations. But I see people who focus on nutrition alone without the gym, absent the gym, and they make amazing transformations. So I think when you can do them both, they act synergistically with each mm -hmm. other. And, and now you're seeing amazing transformations. I know I, I, one of my type 2 diabetics is, bench, is uh, deadlifting over 300 pounds. Wow. You know, and that's, that's incredible to me. And you'll never get to that until you add nutrition in. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and you start getting the ample proteins in there for recovery and things like this. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about the people that uh, work out. They think they need the the pre pre drink and the post drink and the uh, the protein drinks and all these. Is that real food? No, it's not real food. And I would call and is it necessary? Would, all I these would, bars would, that people are buying. I and... would call it a supplement. Okay, right there to supplement your diet. So we, I always recommend you get your nutrients through real food. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to pre workout drink, uh, I will have a cup of coffee. And I think, okay. right, I think cool. that's fine. I think yeah. when you add all these other things, I don't think it's necessary. And you become dependent on it. After so long of, you know, having to get amped up by taking this sort of energy drink, this pre-workout drink, you become dependent on it. What happens when you don't have it, right? So if we're trying to replicate real life, and CrossFit really focus on getting better at everyday life, you know, mm -hmm. having this pre-workout drink before you jump into workout, I don't think is necessary at all. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to post-workout, when you're done working out, I think a protein shake or some branched amino acids can be helpful because, you know, to eat a big steak, that steak would have to be broken down. It's just protein. It has to be broken down to small units of amino acids. And then your specific amino acids for recovery okay. have to be divided out. And then, so it takes a lot longer. But if you take uh, a branched chain amino acid, which branched chain amino acids, for those who don't know, are specifically designed for repair and recovery of the body. Mm -hmm. And so if you can take them amino acids right after a workout or even intra workout, I think your body can start recovering right away. Okay. And something else in sort of uh, people see creatine yep. as this meathead supplement, and it's actually not. It's pretty amazing. The body, you, you can get it. You know, you'd have to eat about two pounds of red meat a day to get five grams of creatine, which is what I recommend everybody take. But if you look at the studies on creatine, it's absolutely amazing. Even, you know, most of the studies are geriatrics, the elderly people. And they're able to increase muscle strength and muscle tone, absent, absent fitness. Mm. You know, some of these people are bedridden. And that could be the difference between, you know, being able to get up out of that bed and use the restroom by yourself. Mm. Or even limiting uh, falls, right? So it's, it's muscle weakness. And it's one of the reasons we see so many falls in the elderly. So I think anybody can benefit from creatine. Okay. Okay. If, if people were going to take uh, one supplement or, or what should they take? Is it like a multivitamin plus creatine? Or what's the simplest? So I think multivitamins are useless. And okay. one of the reasons, it has this laundry list of, of nutrients that's on it. Most of these nutrients you're going to get through real food. Whole, whole food, real food. Right. Uh -huh. The few that you're not going to get enough of, your vitamin D, omega-3, zinc, and magnesium, that multivitamin is not going to have enough to make a difference whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So I think if people had to supplement for health specifically, 
They should be taking a high quality omega-3 with DHA and EPA, mm -hmm. a quality absorbable magnesium like citrate, glycinate, uh, or chelated, high quality zinc, the same, and uh, vitamin D. Now, if they don't, it, vitamin D can be one of those uh, weird ones because how much do you take to become sufficient? But I think everybody could probably stand to take 5,000 IUs of vitamin D per day until they're seen by their doctor. Mm -hmm. And then we'll see where their level's at. And if they're still low, you know, they could up that to 10,000. But okay. I think 5,000 is a safe place to start, you know, mm -hmm. as long as you have uh, a doctor's appointment somewhere in the next six months. Mm -hmm. You can get that checked out, and they'll see where you're at. Perfect. And I wanted to touch a little bit about, first of all, those that are listening and they want to learn more, do you have any good resources, websites, books, things that you just kind of that that have good information? Oh, my goodness. I've read so many books and listened to so many podcasts. It's tough. I think... Uh, Dr. Jason Fong. Yep. Fang. Yep. Fong. Yeah. Yeah. Fong. I, I think you know you you turned me on to that book. That's a good transition. Good transition. We'll talk right, about this topic you turn, now. Right. You turned me on to that book uh, with fasting, and I found that to be one of the most complete resources yeah. for both intermittent fasting and, and some longer term fasting that I was able to find. Yeah. So the the book is called for those that are watching. It's uh, called. There's a couple of books: the Complete Guide to Intermittent Fasting. There's the Obesity Code, and there's the Diabetes Code. These are all really great books. But what's so great is that ninety percent is science. And then like 10% talks about this, I think we're going to conclude topic, talking about this last topic, if you don't mind, sure. intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell me your thoughts. You've been doing it for over 10 years. Right. I didn't even know it existed until a couple years ago. You, so. you know, and how I started intermittent fasting, I don't, because there wasn't a lot of information define, about it. Define what it is first. Uh, basically, your, your eating window, right? Mm -hmm. So some people have a four-hour eating window. I think we're saying that you, you I, sort of work hour, towards one meal a day. One hour. meal a day. Yep. Uh, I, I had basically a six-hour feeding window, so I would fast for 18 hours. And then, and the way it started, it, it's almost laziness, but also I was trying to be smart about what I actually ate when I was at work over the midnight shift. As a police officer. Right, right. Mm -hmm. right. So I would eat at 3 in the afternoon when I woke up, and then I would eat again about 9 o'clock at night, and then I'd go to work, and I wouldn't eat because there's no good food choices in the middle mm -hmm. of the night, in probably anywhere, regardless if it's Worcester or not. And then I'd come home, and I'd go to sleep and sleep my eight hours. And then I would wake up and I'd eat again. And they just seemed to work really, really well for me. I was able to stay lean. I seen, you know, and no offense to my coworkers, but I was, you They're know, some of them were gaining weight. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. We even seen an unfortunate heart attack on my shift. Mm. One of my good friends, yeah. Mm. So it worked well for you. It and really did. When did you start learning? You were just doing it, but when did you start learning about the science behind it? And Around, and well, I guess maybe seven or eight years ago when it started becoming a little bit a more A lot of bodybuilders. There was lean gains. Sure. You know, they, they started to talk about that. And well, I, I just, I found it amazing, and I think there's even more science coming out now, that you can actually not eat for a specific amount of time, even especially longer-term fasting. And, you know, let's look at, let's look at long-term fasting real quick. There was a 1,250% increase in human growth hormone without eating for 120 hours. That's, that's where it peaked, and I thought that was absolutely unbelievable. So growth hormone, for those that are, are watching, it helps inc increase lean muscle mass, sure. right? That's what it does. And mm -hmm. so and it's the only way that you can get increased growth hormone is, is through, one of the only ways, I think, is through fasting. I don't know of any right. other way of getting it. Or is natural. Yeah, They're natural. Right. Natural Right, ones. there are some. Sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. And it's pretty amazing. I actually figured out, like, the whole nutrition thing to me is very mechanical. Mm -hmm. So if I understand mechanically how it works, and basically as the stomach shrinks, it releases ghrelin. Ghrelin is an appetite stimulant, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but ghrelin also causes the pancreas to release human growth hormone. So that's kind of the way that happens. Because I was always curious, how does the body know how this is going to happen or how is mm -hmm. that going to mm -hmm. happen? Yeah. So. It all makes sense if you, if you understand right. it. Right. Yeah. I thought that was kind of neat. For, for those that are at your gym, do you encourage them to do intermittent fasting? And, and, and how do you explain it? I know you can explain it in two minutes, but how do you explain it for them to, to be successful doing it? Well, I think you've got to give it a try. You have to understand that the first time you try either intermittent fasting or longer-term fasting, it's going to be very difficult because mm -hmm. your body's sort of in shock. It's like, what in the world are you thinking of doing? You know, I'm used to eating every 90 to 120 minutes, and all of a sudden now you're giving me this long period of no food. And you have to be committed. So you have to be committed to a timeline. So if you want to do 18 hours, you have to commit to that 18 hours. Mm -hmm. If you go into it saying, I'm going to go as long as I can, it's not going to work. Because you're going to give in, right? Your yep. body's going to elicit all these hormones that say, you know, ghrelin being, ghrelin being one of them, and you, you're hungry, you need to eat, and you're going to cave. But if you commit to 18 hours, 24 hours, you're going, you're more likely going to be successful. 
Mm -hmm. And you, you commit to that time. You try it. Now, you can drink certain things or you can do other things. What can you drink? What, what, what do you tell people? Sure. You, you'll always drink water. Mm -hmm. Water will never, ever be restricted. This is not a religious type fast. This is for health benefits. And mm -hmm. you actually don't get any benefits whatsoever if you, if you restrict water, mm -hmm. right? In fact, it's a negative. Um, now, there are longer term fasts. I do encourage bone broth after 48 hours, mm -hmm. right? And it will give you some nutrients, but you're still going to get all the benefits of fasting. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I actually got some bone broth cooking at home right now. Yeah. So you can have bone broth. Uh, other than that, I think those two are going to be fine. If uh, you, can, you can take your supplements. So if you're taking zinc, magnesium, omega-3, vitamin D, or even your creatine won't hurt the fast. Yeah. However, I will say amino acids, you know, even branched chain amino acids, et cetera, will stop your fast. You, okay. you will completely disrupt that increase in human growth hormone. So mm -hmm. I would actually avoid those. During Coffee, the tea? Coffee and tea are going to be fine. Okay. Yeah. Right. And it is going to be hard enough, right? So we don't want to give you that coffee headache too, you yeah. know, with that absence of caffeine. We would not want that to happen because that's going to make it more difficult for you. But it actually doesn't disrupt your fast, right? You're still going to get the, the benefits with the decrease in, in body fat and the increase in human growth hormone, even if you include coffee. Yeah. People ask, working out, can you work out when you're fasting? Absolutely. I had, oh my goodness, when I did my longer, longer fast, I had so much energy, energy, I could not stay out of the gym. My legs were shaking, and I'm like, I just got to go to the gym. I'm so excited to go to the gym. Now, my workouts weren't as awesome, mm -hmm. truth be told, right? So you're digging, you know, you, there's not a whole lot of glycogen reserves to get in on, yep. and you're, you're, you're sort of working towards pulling these fat reserves to work on fat reserves, mm -hmm. and fat is sort of a slower-burning fuel. Okay. So it can become a little bit more difficult with the CrossFit high-intensity stuff or any high-intensity workout. But you have so much energy to work out. You feel great, and you know that sort of, I always think about it, you're forcing these fuel systems to work more efficiently, especially that fat burning fuel system, right? Mm -hmm. So we talk, our bodies can burn glucose, so we can burn fat as a source of energy. Mm -hmm. and we're so used to burning glucose, when we start burning fat, it can be a little bit difficult at mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. But I think if you're forcing that fuel system, it gets easier and easier to learn, your body learns and adapts at burning fat, you become more efficient at burning fat. So I can, I think working out, uh, you know, the science supports this. Fasted workouts is one of, the, one of the best ways to drop body fat. It is. It so is. science supported by science, too. Well, great. Uh, so it's been great to have uh, Paul Sear here from uh, CrossFit Worcester. Uh, once again, for those that want to learn more about these things, come by the gym, introduce themselves to you, stop by oh, for absolutely. a workout. We're at, we're at 10 Pullman Street, or you can email us at staff at CrossFit Worcester, and we'd love to have you. I mean, ask for me. If I'm at home, I'll come to the gym. I'll meet you. <laughs> and we'll just uh, we'll chat it up and we'll give you a workout. Great. Okay, thank you so much. Appreciate it for uh, coming. Thanks, Don. Thanks for having me.